The first point we need to examine in discussing this scripture is the statement, remember ye not. Remember ye not. Please follow carefully. That is a very powerful warning. He's saying, remember ye not. He's attempting to guide your focus to something. And he's saying, the way the mind works is you cannot be focused on the past and on the future together. Are we together? So he's helping to disconnect you from something so that he can redirect your attention to something else God is doing. Because at every given point, your mind, your attention, your zeal, your commitment, your passion can only be invested in one aspect of your life. And in this case, this person here is focused on yesterday and its achievements or its failures. And the prophet begins by saying, remember ye not. I wrote here, overdwelling in the past or on the past, whichever is appropriate. Overdwelling in the past or on past thoughts, both negative and positive, can hinder your advancement and your progress in life overdwelling on the past both negative and positive can hinder your advancement and your progress in life as simple as this statement is there are many people today they failed because they succeeded the reason why they became failures was that at one point in their life they were too successful to be focused there are many people today who became successful because they so failed that it brought them to a point of determination that they would not fail again. Here he's telling us that the past, whether positive or negative, can have an adverse effect as far as destiny actualization is concerned. The negative past I wrote here, the negative past can create fear, can create discouragement and it can also deflate your passion to press. When you dwell on a negative past, it sustains an ability to bring fear, it sustains an ability to bring discouragement and to deflate your passion to press. Give us Judges chapter 6, please. We'll read from verse 13 to 15. Judges chapter 6. Is God helping someone? Now follow carefully. And Gideon said unto him, the angel of the Lord comes to Gideon and calls him a mighty man of valor. And look at Gideon's response. Go back to 13. Oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befalling us? And where be the miracles which our father told us of, saying, did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord had forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. 14. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? You thought Gideon would say, Wow, I'm now impressed. Look at his response, verse 15. And he said unto him, O oh my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. Dwelling on a negative past now you understand what I mean by it can bring discouragement it can bring fear it can deflate your passion to press there are many people today who have lost out on their passion towards life towards ministry because their life is a plethora of negative occurrences financial problems marital problems health problems ministry failure maybe mistakes of the past and all those things combined can become a weapon that the devil can use to deflate your passion do you know i'm sure that every one of you here can bear witness that there are people who at one point you could trace their zeal their zeal for life was palpable i mean they, they were bubbling with energy and a few years down the line when they've been beaten down left and right by the vicissitudes of life, they watch you in your zeal as a young man and they say, Save Johnny, this road you are following, we once followed it. Dwelling on a negative past, remember ye not, he says. Hallelujah. 
the Lord is challenging Gideon, giving him an assignment to be a mighty man. And Gideon is saying, listen, you don't know my problem. I am the least in my father's house and my father's house is the least. So don't even bring this. There are many preachers today who have so failed in ministry to a point that any word that comes from God, they cast it as a word from the devil. There are many people who have failed in business. There are many champions, custodians of great destinies that have lost it all. I do not know any great man who has not failed before. When you find one, run away. When you find a great man who has not failed before, you are standing before a risk. There is a failure requirement that becomes an anchor that brings balance and stability to your life in the presence and in the midst of success. Hallelujah. Are we together now? Yes. So dwelling on a negative past can affect you. Many of us, you are listening to me right now in this auditorium, across the overflows and following online. Perhaps this is already a word for you. In the midst of your failure, there is still an apostle there. In the midst of your failure, there is still a prophet there. In the midst of a failure, there is still a businessman. The kingdom financier is still there. Do not think yesterday went away with the gift and the grace and the mantle and the calling. It is still there. Remember ye not. He's redirecting the focus of a people to understand the new that God is doing now. Are we together now? Yes. You cannot discern and understand the prophetic thing God is doing in your family. Apostle, don't tell me about a great life. We've lost three, four, five members of our family and we do not even know who is next. Remember ye not the former things. When he says remember ye not, he's not saying erode it out of your memory. That cannot happen. He's saying do not dwell, do not give it life and strength. Do not dedicate your focus. Do not invest your attention to that which is dead. You only try to water a tree that is dying, but if it is dead, you leave it. Are we together? How about the positive past? The positive past I wrote here can create complacency, can create pride, can create overconfidence, and even indiscipline. Let me take it again. Dwelling on the positive past, your achievements over dwelling, I would say, over dwelling on your positive past can create complacency, lukewarmness, can create pride, can create overconfidence, and can create a sense of indiscipline. When you dwell on your negative past, the side effect is that you will have fear, discouragement. It will deflate your passion to press. But when you dwell on your positive past, over dwell there, build a monument and a camp around yesterday and its achievement and all its tried, it's able to bring you to a point of complacency, a point of pride, a point of overconfidence and indiscipline. Judges chapter 16, please, from verse 18 to 21. Give it to us. It's the same book of Judges. Now we want to examine another character called Samson. Samson was a warrior par excellence. The source of his strength was a mystery. This man would single-handedly defeat a whole army without seeking for help. And he became so confident upon his achievements of yesterday and now yesteryears. Read verse 18 and 29. Follow carefully and let's learn a lesson there. When Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up this once, for he had showed me all his heart. And the lord of the Philistines came up unto her and brought money into her hand. You see why poverty is very bad? Because this woman destroyed the destiny of a great man simply because of money. And she made him sleep upon her knees. And she called for a man and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his hair and she began to afflict him and his strength went from him. Verse 20, the Bible says, and she said, the Philistines be upon thee, Samson. Read the remaining part of 20, ready? One to read. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go up as at 
other times as before and shake myself and he wits not that the Lord had departed from him. Verse 21. But the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with fetters of brass and he did grind in the prison house. Can I tell you, overconfidence has destroyed many people. I will not pray, but the power of God will still move. I will not rehearse like, like, like never before, but I will still do well. I will still be a champion. I will not study scripture, but the grace is already there. I have revelation anyhow. Can I tell you, our world is full of psychophants who clap for you even when you are falling until you finally get to your grave. You must know how to celebrate success and create a boundary and say Lord thank you for the blessings of yesterday but this one thing I do forgetting the things that are behind whatever it is I press many people do not have the stamina to look away from the uploads of yesterday and remain focused into the vision of the now dwelling on your positive past can destroy it can bring pride. It can bring overconfidence. In the case of Samson, she woke him up and said, the Philistines are upon you. And the Bible said he shook himself like before. I will not read any business book. I've been an astute businessman. I will excel as before. It doesn't matter. I'm a man so loved by people. Doesn't matter how serious I am spiritually or not. Members who come as before. The deception of success is that without any effort to continue, it tries to indoctrinate you into believing that the seasons that are upon you will remain that way forever. Make reference to my teaching, the law of seasons. Remember the dream of Pharaoh, that in every man's life, there is seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. What you do in the years of plenty is what will sustain you. Please listen to that teaching, the law of seasons. I told you that every dry season comes with a letter from rainy season, I am coming. And every rainy season comes with a letter from dry season, I am coming. You will not always be a CEO, mm -mm. no matter how great you are. Are we together? Yes. Respectfully speaking, there are many people, especially in the arts and entertainment, in sports, who did not know that the seasons in a man's life, there is transition. And you can find someone who may be an excellent goalkeeper, an excellent striker, speaking in terms of soccer, football. And they can enjoy grace and, and splendor for 10, 15, perhaps 20 years. And in one moment, how about political leaders? In one moment, you are a leader and in a matter of minutes, everything, the entire paraphernalia that comes with your position departs. Remember ye not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Remember ye not the former things, great former things. The moment it is former, whether it is great or it is not, you celebrate it, you can reminisce on it so that it helps to add that energy but over dwelling in yesterday. Have you seen people who the only thing they have to tell you is the achievements of yesteryears? I was once anointed, we once do, did mighty crusades. For instance, or I was once a great businessman. I shook hands with this president and that president. And you are asking, where were you when seasons changed? You must understand how to navigate prophetic seasons. Otherwise, you would not have longevity of impact. So the prophet is teaching us and he's saying, Remember ye not the former things, nor consider the things of old, we have learned so far now that overdwelling on the past, whether positively or negatively, can create an adverse effect on your life and destiny. Philippians chapter 3, 13 and 14, just to buttress on that point, Paul said, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, he says, but this one thing I do, I like Paul, forgetting those things which are behind, the achievements, the pain, the failure, Apostle, I would have been a great man today, but in 1999, they defrauded me of my business. It is past. 
You cannot continue remaining there whereas there is a demand upon your life and your destiny. You must sustain the ability to wave goodbye to yesterday and all its crowns and all its pain so that you can press. Nobody runs forward looking backward. Have you found such a person that you run, you really intend to run? Say an Olympian and they shoot the gun on your marks, set, and then they shoot the gun and the person is turning back and intends to run and to run and win. Mm -mm. Your focus should be so much so that even looking to the side can distract you. Talk less looking back. Let's finish that scripture. I press towards the mark for the price of the high calling in Jesus Christ. I consider not myself to have apprehended but this one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind and reaching forth for those things that are before me, he said, I press. 